All right, hello everybody. Sorry about that. Uh, so, first off, l l let me know if you can hear me. Let's fix this stream real quick. So it was a big problem with the uh, the event that I set up. So this is a totally different stream. So I have to change change some of the settings really quick. But just let me know in the comments if you can hear me. Awesome. All right, so let's get started. So right here is the Creality Ender 3 I got from uh, GearBest.com and uh, just came in. We're going to unbox it, set it up, see what the parts are, see what comes with it. And then we're gonna do a few test prints, talk to you guys, and answer some questions. Should be fun. So, uh, this is my first time opening this box. I haven't really, I haven't really uh, done some research yet on the Ender Three, but we'll see what it's, we'll see what's in the box and put it together. See how hard it is. It's about one hundred and eighty dollars. That was a pretty good price for a Creality printer. So, all right. So, I think the bed is 220 by 220 by 250 ish. It has one extruder, heated bed. It has a big, uh, like three inch LCD screen. And I think it actually has a flexible build plate, so you can take it off and pop prints off, just like a like a like a a build tack flex plate system. All right, so oh, that's kind of funny. So on Gearbest, the on Gearbest, the the only way I could order this and it'll come this fast if I got the European uh, the European plug. So they actually threw in a US adapter, which is actually pretty pretty nice. They didn't tell me that. All right, so actually really quick, before we get started, I'm going to post on Twitter really quick so people know. Oops. So, one second. Because all my all my stream stuff got messed up with this uh, YouTube live event. For some reason, when I streamed to the, the event, it wasn't working. But when I streamed to my regular channel, for some reason, it started working perfectly. It's really weird. Creality. Ender 3. Cool. Alright, so let's get started. That should be sending. Awesome. So, first thing in the box, of course, paperwork. Uh, looks like the instruction instructions. So this is not fully assembled. Most, most things are. We have to put the two side rails on the top, the X carriage, the LCD screen, power supply, things like that. It shouldn't take that long, but it's not like the CR10, where you just, it's two pieces. You put the top carriage on the bottom carriage and everything will work. So, of course, there's quality control. Don't need that. Uh, a note from Creality just saying blah, 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 blah. This is still new and may be improved, okay. What else? Oh, so th this is the instructions. So let's see how many steps are in here. Not too bad. 12 steps. Shouldn't take that long. M most stuff is fully assembled here. 
All right. So, let's see. First thing, we have some metal. Looks like, oh, there's lead screw. Z-axis lead screw here. Cool. And looks like, oh, what is this? Oh, looks like heat shrink or something, some tube. And this looks like a one by two, two one by two inch V-slot aluminum. Cool. Uh, what is this? Metal. This looks, th this is the spool holder for the top. And some accessories. So zip ties, wrenches, Allen keys, screws, stuff like that. To put the printer together. We have micro SD card, the an extra nozzle, Z-axis limit switch, and what what is that? Let me see. Oh, this is filament actually. That's so funny. This is the smallest amount of filament I've ever seen come with a printer. That's like nothing. Oh my god. That's funny. That's like nothing. All right. So, uh, besides that, we have super tiny spatula, of course. It, it is sharpened, which is cool to get under the prints. What else? Uh, more foam, packing stuff, some more metal. Let's see what this is. This is, looks like for the X carriage, one by one, V-slot aluminum, cool. Some more packaging. These reality printers are actually packaged pretty nice. They're coming from China, so they should be packaged nice to, to, to make it all the way here. And so here's, of course, the European plug, but they did give me an adapter because I live in the, in the United States, which is cool. So that, so that should hopefully work. Awesome. So this looks like the X carriage. So it's gonna go up and down. Here is the X or yeah, X axis motor and the extruder motor. It's actually really funny. So for some reason, all the X, Y, and Z steppers are pancakes, pancake, pancake stepper motors, and there, and the extruder is a full size NEMA 17 stepper motor, which is pretty funny actually. So I guess the well, it, it makes sense. The extruder needs some more torque to pull that filament through. So, pancakes for the X, Y, and Z, and then full size for the extruder. Cool. We're already running out of room here. So, looks like this is the Z axis motor. Z axis, you screw it in right here, and you put it in your lead screw right here. It's also a pancake step stepper motor, just funny. The, the CR10. It has full size, I believe. Yeah, full size stepper motors because it was everything there is bigger and needs more torque to pull everything along. All right, and then here is the bed, print bed, and also has the control board inside. There you go. And the print head attached to it. So, this is print bed, the motor's already attached, another stepper motor, all the wires connected, and here is the, I think Creality makes this, hello 3D printing kid, welcome. This is the Creality control board, I think they make it. Um, here is the power, it comes with a power supply that, that, that connects via these XTC, XTC 60 controllers, like like uh, LiPo batteries for, for like drones or planes like that, same connector, which is actually really cool, really smart. And then I think this is just normal like CR10 print print head, nozzle, part cooling fan. Yeah, pretty 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 normal. Same as the CR10 things like that. I'll put this down. One second. 
All right, cool. So uh, here is the packaging. Here's the power supply. Here's the other ends of that cable. Oh, <laughs> hey, flaming. Looks like the same size as the a A8. Yeah, I think it's about, the, it may be a little bit bigger, a little bit, um, but we'll have to see. I think the, the A-Net is, is it 8 by 8 inches. This is a little bit bigger, I believe, but we'll see. Um, this is the power supply. It has a injection molded case, housing, on off switch, which is awesome. No exposed wires. I do have to, yep, I have to change the power supply. It's at 230. In America, we're at 215, so I have to change that. Don't let me forget. Um, put that down right here. What else? So this looks like the other side of the x-axis carriage. I think so. Yeah, looks like it. And spool holder that connects right here. There has to be some screw for the back, I believe. Yeah. Okay, flaming. Uh, so this is the control panel for the yeah the the LCD screen with the knob. Same as the CR10, but it has the logo on it. Looks like yeah, oh the, 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 there's actually three inputs here, but there's only one cable to connect it. I don't know. Ho hopefully, I'll say in the instructions, but. But in the ANA, but depends on how much money and if you like putting it all together, you might think about it. Yeah, that's true. The ANA, the, the ANA A8 comes totally apart. And it's, it, it's, a, it's a kit from scratch and you have to put it together. It takes a while. Um, but this looks like most of it's assembled. Um, but we'll see how long it takes to put together. It looks like it shouldn't take that long. Most of it's assembled. But yeah, so that's the screen. We will put that down. Cool. And then, is that it? Yeah. All right. That's all that's in the box. All right. So, let's see. That display looks nice. Yeah, it does. It's actually, let me, let me take off the plastic real quick. It looks like. Yeah, it's the same screen as CR10 and Tavo, Tavo uh, tor Tornado. See you soon again, Jack. Look. Oh, thank you. <laughs> See you later. Um, same here. Weird. New at this. Yeah. So the 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 ANA, the ANA A8 and the Ender 3, they're both. I guess they're both uh, for like beginners or new people. The the ANA A8 is. It's a kit, so you so so you should so you do need some previous experience with building things, putting parts together, putting kits together. Um, but Creality is looking to so bring over some of their uh, customers because it, it it is really cheap at 180 bucks. But and it's and it's almost assembled. I would say 50 percent. But uh, my question is. Will a laptop be powerful enough to use, or would I need a tower? Oh yeah, that's totally fine. Um, so when you're printing, when when you're when you're 3D printing, you don't need to connect the laptop directly to the printer. That's what the control board does. So you can you can either hook it up via a uh, a USB cord, a USB cord, um, to like move the ax axes and print from there. But mostly all of us just just slice an object and then put it on an SD card and stick the SD card into the printer. And then print from there. So it's totally, totally, uh, di totally uh, disconnected from your laptop. Um, what is the background on the floor? Curious. Oh, it's, it's just carpet. <laughs> um, 180 bucks. Yeah, I know it is. Um, it actually on Gearbest, I think it it was on a sale for 170 dollars, which is actually. An amazing price for this for a quality printer, and all these parts look really high quality. And uh, all the all, all the reviews I've seen so far look pretty good for this thing. So 
without further ado, you can keep asking questions. We'll get started. Uh, <laughs> I see two machines. Well, actually, there's five back there. <laughs> CR10, Tavo Tornado, the BQ Magician, Delta, a Zone Star Dual Extruder, and that's a Sun Hokey Prusa i3. Uh, me too, Tom, and weird, wonderful looking to get a 3D printer. Awesome, yeah. This is definitely the time to get into 3D printing. There are so many good kits. Like, I would say cheap printers are getting good, and good printers are getting cheap. So this is a great time to get into 3D printing. Um, and this is only 180 bucks, and so far, it looks very, very promising. It's, it's made by, by, by Creality, so you know it has to be one of the better printers. But, uh, have you made... Darth Vader on the tornado. Uh, not yet. Not yet. I should though. But I actually just finished, I CAD modeled a direct drive adapter for the tornado. So I put that up on my Thingiverse page if you want to print that out. It's working pretty well so far. Because I wanted to print TPU on it and none of these printers are direct drive. So I just converted that to a direct drive system. Uh, yeah. Okay. Cool. So let me bring up the the bed. Whoops. So let me show you real quick. This is actually I've seen this in videos. This is move that stuff out of the way. This is really cool. So you just pop off the clips. And the bed comes off just like that. It's plastic, but you can just flex it and pop the parts right off. That is really cool, really useful, especially for a print that's $180, which is amazing. Flex plate system. This is really, really, really useful, which is super cool that Creality is including that. Uh, what is your Thingiverse page link? Uh, you can just. You can just uh, go on Thingiverse and search 3D now. It's uh, my username. I think is 3D underscore now, and all my stuff should be there. Uh, yes, yeah, so I have around 200 euros to spend. I want to make my own models, my own designs, etc. But I do not have any products yet. PC printer program, etc. Total beginner. Okay, awesome. Yeah, so I have a ton of uh, beginner videos on my channel that explains what a 3D printer is, the, the 3D printing process, everything from finding a model to printing it and, and, and having a physical, a physical object in your hand. So check out those. I have videos on CAD modeling. I have videos on slicing a model in Cura. Uh, plenty of beginner stuff. Um, so for a, beginning, a, a beginner printer, this looks pretty good. I would also... Uh, for 200 euros, there's not that much. Okay, cool, found it. Um, sure, there's, this is under 200. Well, actually, I don't know what the conversion is. I think it's a little over $200, maybe $250 in US dollars. Um, but the table tarantula is in that price range. In a AA is in that price range. This is in the price range. Um, what else? The BQ, BQ, Ma Ma Magician Delta, which is an insanely good. Oh, 2,000. No, sorry, it says 2,000 pounds, English pounds. I don't know what that is in US dollars. 200 pounds. Let me, let me convert that real quick. Give me one second. 2,000 euros to dollars. Two thousand two hundred and seventy-five dollars. Yes, yeah, so that's a good chunk of money if you're a beginner. Um, so with that, there's a ton of good stuff. You can get an original Prusa i3. You can get even an Ultimaker, not the new ones. Maybe Ultimaker two, which is amazing. You can get a Lulzbot. You can get Maker Gear. There are so many good printers. Um, in that price range. So yeah, uh, 
before we get carried off, uh, where did I put, there they are. The instructions, let's get this assembled and we can get a test print going. So, all right, let's move all this stuff over here. So here of our parts. Thank you so much for the beginner's guide. Loved it. And YouTube channel. Oh, thank you so much. I'm glad it could help. Awesome. So move all this stuff over. Alright, so hopefully hopefully this won't take very long as it's meant for beginners. But uh let's see. So first step is we have to attach the two side rails to the base so that should be two by two so this right here you guys can keep asking questions I, I, I can look over at the screen uh, come on where is the end of this there we go so yeah and I also posted about a week ago the ultimate beginner's guide to 3d printers part two that was my most popular video part one um so i got a lot of good feedback from that video and i, and I, I uh made part two of it it it, it it sort of goes into much more detail in the 3d printing it was more in depth um but if you're a beginner you should go check out ultimate Be Be beginner's guide part one and after that go check out part two um those definitely are helpful for total beginners. Come on. There we go. I'll try to be... Wait, just not excited. Can't wait to get one. Might think about Ender 3 or CR10. Cool. Yeah, I love my CR10. Um, it's a fantastic printer. At a really, really good price. Huge build volume. It's a great printer. So, uh, let's see. So this is the front of the printer. Should be two here, two there. Front. So this here, this here. Cool, we'll check them out nice. Yeah, they're really good. Um, they, they go from Part one, a total total beginner. You need you need to know nothing, um, all the way up to part two at the end, which you should know almost not everything, but you will know a lot about three D printing. My first live chat to participate in, love it. <laughs> yeah, thank you for uh, coming co coming and watching and chatting with me. This is fun. This is my first live stream too. I hope you guys like it. There's a little problem at the beginning with events but <laughs> I got it working. I'm gonna take this stuff apart. Cool. All right, so it should be a bag of screws. Don't need this yet. So let's see what comes with this printer. But, oh, so flush cutters from Creality. Awesome. Yeah, these are these are some of the best, some of the best flush cutters I own. Nice grippy handle. These are these are the best thing with three D printing to cut filament off. It's awesome, and for like and for uh, snipping support, these are really really cool. Put those over here. Uh. Tom Gray, do you already own any 3D printers? I'm not sure. You have to ask him. Um, some zip ties for cable management, I believe. What else? Uh, tools. That'll be good. Good help. I have a bunch of tools um, from all the printers I got, but it's always nice getting a set specifically specifically made for. The printer that I'm assembling. Um, 
No, I do not. I was looking at the ANA A8 from, from right here on YouTube, but I'm thinking about getting getting or uh, want a CR10, but like a lot of things modify them too. Yeah, um, with like Chinese clone Prusa i3s, you are definitely going to need to mod things, CAD more parts, print them out, test things. Like if you can see right here that, that, that this blue one is a uh, Sun Hokey Prusa i3, all that blue is all the stuff I printed. Actually, that's a E3D V6 nozzle. I put all new bearings in that, and that's totally modded up, which is really fun. But for a beginner, it might not <laughs> be the best to get a printer that doesn't work well right out of the box. But tons of bags. Oh my gosh. Look at all this stuff. But they're all labeled. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, that's actually awesome. It tells you exactly what step each bag's for. That's really cool. Awesome. Okay. So, um, let's see. Step one, two M545s, which should be here. No, not that. M545. With the washers already installed. Uh, cool. In a in in a eight maybe, but the cheap these upgrades that just be more wise than to get a CR10 on this one. He's reviewing now. Yeah, you're definitely gonna need some upgrades on the in a eight, um, as well as any other Chinese clone Truza i3 machines. But that is definitely the fun part. And if you want to know the ins and outs of 3D printers, then definitely think about getting one of those uh, Chinese uh, Prusa i3 clones because once you put that together, fix all the problems, CAD more parts, print them, fix your printer, make it better, you're going to know everything about 3D printing. So, um, yeah, but they, they are tough for beginners who just know nothing and, and, and just want to get a printer, set it up, and just start printing right away. Yeah. All right, so... Let me find the, the right Allen key for this. One second. There we go. Cool. All right. Whoa, these are actually pretty long Allen keys. The ones from, from the CR10 were a lot shorter than this. These are really nice. They have Ball, ball heads on the ends. Huh. It's pretty cool. Let's see if this fits. Yep. Perfect. This is already a mess. Research, researching now and learning a lot. Need to look into the software side. So confused about that. Yeah. So, software side, you get a. Uh, hold on one second. Yep. Okay. So software side, you get a 3D model in an STL format or OBJ. Those are metric screws, uh, probably, yeah. Um, so you get it in STL or OBJ format, usually STL, and then you insert that STL into a slicer. So here is, here is what I like, also simpl simplify 3D, but that's $150. Here is free, it's from Ultimaker. Woo. Um, and then you insert that into a slicer. Come on. And then, then, and then the, the, the slicer has the profile for your printer. Um, so the bed size, how many extruders, and then you can change in the slicer the, the nozzle temperature to match your filament. You, you can change the orientation of the model. You can change the infill, shells, everything about uh, about about the model um, I'm not doing this right at all what the heck oh wait a second oh nope 
That is not right. These directions. What are you saying? What is your name? My name is Jack. Huh. That's weird. The screws don't fit. Oh, wait a s what? This is weird. <laughs> Hi, Tom. Um, so you're supposed, to, you're supposed to stick these screws up through the bottom to attach the sides on, but they don't seem to go all the way through. That makes no sense. What are these? M545. That's what I got. That's weird. Let me find that again. Oh, this is probably it. Yep. Wrong screws. <laughs> My fault. So, any more questions, let me know. I'm happy to answer. I love helping beginners get into 3D printing. It's an awesome hobby. Yep. I'm stupid. Wrong screws. Alright. Need four of them. Two on each side. One, two, one, two. One, two. Alright. This looks a lot better. Stick this up through the bottom. Screw the side rails in. And this is most... Uh, Clone Prusa i3s, and even the original Prusa i3, they have these these acrylic frames or metal, but like these super thin walled frames, which is well, I guess for the original Prusa i3, they build theirs very very well, but these Chinese ones with with, with just acrylic, they're not very stable at all. So with CR10 having 2020. V slot aluminum. This this thing is gonna be a beast. It's gonna be solid as a rock. So stick this there. There we go. Much better. hard to live stream, look at the comments, and put this together at the same time. Alright, there we go. Alright. one at a time. And the fill off. Wonderful. So, yep, these are already threaded. Jack, do you have a CR-10? Yes, I do. Right back here, behind the table tornado. Come on. There we go. Nice, yeah. It's an awesome printer. The software side is what I also need some study more. Yeah, so I do have a beginner's guide to Kira on my channel. That explains everything from just from getting an STL model to putting it on your SD card and clicking print. So you should go check that out. That would be helpful. Um, I would recommend, dang it, I would recommend Kira. Um, it's it's totally free, and it's really simple, easy to use. It has a, a simple setting where it's like only a few options you can change to print with, but then, but then also an advanced um, setting where you can click a button and you can change every small little setting to get your prints to come out perfectly. And I'll go over that in the uh, 
in the video as well. You should check out. Uh, so for, I didn't know till now that, that the Simplify was charged. That was free like here. Yes, yeah, Simpl Simplify 3D cost like $150, I believe. It is not free, which stinks. It's a really it's a really good slicer, but it is not free. Some printers come with a license though, but they're more expensive printers. Like, really, really expensive printers. Cool, thanks for the tip. Yeah. Yes, yeah, slicing is one of the hard parts of getting into 3D printing. Come on. There we go. All right. Right side should be on. This V slot, extrude aluminum, is rock solid. It's not going anywhere. Awesome. There we go. Cool. One side done. Two more. Cool. Let me check one thing really quick. Yeah, cool. All right, so we'll like to do a video with you some day about 3D printers, it's like fun. Yeah, definitely. Is Cure compatible with most 3D printers? Yeah, so when you export, so when you slice a model, um, well, some, some printers, yeah, so I'll, I'll get into that. I, I, I'll get into this in uh, the video, but when you export a, a sliced model, like a, a model, ready to go into your printer and then click print. It's called a G code file, dot G code, which is a, a bunch of ASCII characters that, that that tells each stepper where to go. I can move X this way, Y this way, Z that way, extruder out, stuff like that. Um, so most parents, like all these parents right here, take G code. So, so with Cura, I just need to export it as a, a, G, a G code file and then all these printers can read that file. They're all not going to print right because they have different bed sizes and stuff like that. But um, but a G code file is what mostly all free printers take right now, except for MakerBots, of course. <laughs> they they use a, a dot MakerBot file and they need their own slicer. I don't know why. Um, but almost every printer now takes uh, G code, which is what Cure exports as, and also um, what Simplify 3D exports as as well. Can Cure change the size of a model to fit the bed of the printer you are using? Yes, exactly. So the slicer is, is, is a 3D viewer. So when you input, it's gonna be hard. When you input your model, it's gonna show up like there's, there's gonna be like a virtual 3D environment and your bed is gonna be there and you can put the part on the bed, you can change change the orientation, move it around, move it around on the bed, change change the size, things like that, add support. That's all done in the slicer. It's gonna be hard. <laughs> Cool. Yeah. So the 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 actual three D object is an STL or or an OBJ, but STLs are more popular. Um, and then that's the 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 actual three D model is an STL. That's it. It's just three D model. It's it's a it's a mesh. So it's 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 made up of a bunch of small triangles to make up the three object. And then um, you import that object into your slicer, change all the settings that that, that your printer is going to use. So that so that does nothing to the actual model. It just creates the code for the printer on how to print that model correctly. Hopefully this 
is going in. What kinds of filament have you used? PLA seems the best and most used. Yeah, PLA is pretty much what I use all the time. It's good for beginners. It's super easy to print with, non-toxic. You don't need a heated bed, even though all, all these printers have heated beds. Um, PLA is also pretty cheap. Um, but once you get more into 3D printing, and then, uh, you should probably try out some more exotics, which is fun. Like I have wood, which is awesome. Which is awesome. So most exotics are PLA composites, which means it's, it's PLA plastic, plastic um, mixed with other materials. So so like wood is just PLA mixed with like wood dust, but it prints and smells and smells and sands like wood would do. Um, also carbon fiber mixed with PLA, TPU, which is a totally di di a totally different plastic. It's not PLA. But that's flexible. There's nylon. There's ABS, which is harder to print with, but it's a it's a tougher plastic. Uh, Lego is made of ABS. Um, so yeah, there are a lot of materials to print with, um, but mostly start out with PLA because that's the easiest, cheapest, um, and it just works. Like when you're printing, for example, ABS, it's super hard to print with. You might need an enclosure. It warps. It's it's hard. Also, HIPS, H I P S, HIPS, is also a material. It, 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 it has a very matte finish. Um, it's also super hard to print with. You need an enclosure to trap in a lot of heat into the to the print area. But yeah, cool. Looks good so far. So wobbly, but if I fix that. Uh, does the printer print with multiple colors? So this one, it does not. It has only one extruder, one, one, one nozzle. Um, yeah, right here. Uh, but over here, the Zone Star prints with two extruders. You can see one tube going up here, well, then one tube going up here. It has two nozzles, so it can print with like black here, switch and go to white here. Um, some printers like the MMU for the Prusa i3, multi 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 material upgrade. Um, it has four motors with four tubes going down into one print head, and it can pull out and push in different filaments to print different colors. Um, which is cool, whoa, which is cool. But this one only prints with one, but if you want to in the future use this printer to print with multiple colors, you can, because there's a machine called the the uh, the Palette, or Palette Plus, I guess now, which you feed in four different colors, or, or uh, yeah, I guess colors, of, of plastic, and then it actually cuts the, 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 filament and then splices splices them all together into one long strand of filament so it can feed into this in, in, into this uh, one extruder printer and then it's a it's a long uh, string of a filament but it's cut into different colors by a, a, a computer of course and then your printer can print multiple colors with a uh, that long strand because because like every so calculated inches or whatever or millimeters it changes colors and then and then, and then while it prints it's it's synced up to the palette machine and then it um prints out the different colors for the certain parts you want to be uh a different color uh what extruder that extruder looks heavy i heard that will slow down print speed and freeze time okay so um this is called a bowden system so that means that there is a long PTFE tube that goes up, and then on the side, it gets pulled in and pushed out right here. So this part is going to be here, and it's, it's going to be pushed through a tube into the filament. So a Bowden means that, that the filament gets pushed from on the frame into the hot end itself. So this is actually a very light head, actually. This is one of the lightest 
Um, well, what, one of the one of the latest print heads, I guess. Yeah, it is. Um, so, so uh, what I was talking about over here with this with the Tavo is it has a it's called a boat. Oh, sorry, sorry. It's called a direct drive system. So what that means is that the 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 motor that pushes out the filament is directly above the hot end. So this motor is, is, is being mounted directly on the carriage, which, which, which makes it a lot heavier. So Bowden, so Bowden systems, <laughs> no, it's fine. <laughs> um, but so these Bowden systems are actually very popular because it, it keeps a, a, a lot of the weight off the print head and so, with both systems, you can print faster. But with uh, direct drive, you can, you, you can print faster, but it's harder. You need, you need bigger motors, more torque, things like that, um, because it's a lot heavier with this with an, an extra motor on the print head. So is that is that, is that, uh, so is that a good setup instead of on the carriage? Yes. Well, it depends on on, on, what, on what you want. Most most printers now have well, most cheap printers have Bowden, which is good. It's fast. Higher quality because there's, well, higher quality because there's not a lot, a lot a lot of weight on the on the on the X carriage, um, but it is hard to print with flexibles like like TPU, which is why I upgraded this Tavo to a direct drive it's because direct, direct drive is much better for flexibles, um, but for beginners this is fantastic, a fantastic setup. All right, so. Let's continue. Step two. All right. Power supply and screen. Cool. Quickly, I'm going to change this from 230 to 115 because I live in America and we have 120 volt power here. So this looks like it's going to mount here, I believe. Yeah. We need one M5 by eight, which looks like these. Oh, this is M4 by 16. Four by 14, four by 18. I'm bad at this. Five by eight. Here we go, five by eight. They're a different color. They're black on here and silver here. How long have you been doing 3D printing? Uh, a few years now, two or three years, I would say. Or no, like three or, th three or four years. Three or four. All right. So it looks like screen mounts on the right side. Oop. Different Allen key size. Did you make a video on the CR10? Yes, I did. I made videos on all these printers here on my channel. Have you sold any of the products you have made? Um. No, well, I think you mean printed. Um, I, I, I have a 3D Hubs account, so people uh, give me models and I print them for them, which I guess is selling it, but I'm printing it for them. They, they give, 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 give me what they, what they want printed and I print it for them. Cool, take a look. Yes, pro yes. <laughs> Typing is rubbish. <laughs> That's fine. Come on. There we go. Cool. I hit you up. Make something for me. Thanks. 
Yeah, all my 3D hubs. You can buy stuff and I'll print it and send it out to you. Come on. This is hard to put these screws in. Come on. Screen is on. It's actually more stable than I thought. Cool. There we go. Screen's on. That was easy. Now, time for the power supply. So, looks like we need two. M4 by 20. M4 by 20. M4 by 18. Found a thanks. It was about four minutes long. Yeah. Cool. Most of my videos are pretty short, except for the ultimate Be beginner's guide. Because that has a lot of content to go through. <laughs> Um, 4 by 20, yes. Need two of these for the power supply. It's going to go mount on the side right here. It's a pretty compact printer. Balance right there. Right there. How do you collab with other 3D makers? Um, on videos on my channel, no. I would love to. That'd be awesome. But um, on, on like Instagram and stuff, I've done projects with other people. On, on Instagram, there's, there's a huge community of 3D printer, 3D printing people, and it's, it's super cool. This is the right size. Nope. There we go. Cool. Yeah, I would love to collab with other 3D print printing channels or people. That would be awesome. Maybe do a big project. Maybe make a printer from scratch. I don't know. That'll be fun. I've, I have so many printers over here that I'm not really using because they're like half broken or something. I love to make make like the ultimate 3D printer. Scrap all these half broken ones. Make a really really good 3D printer. Make a video about that. That'll be fun. All right. So. Power supply is on. I like Angus from Yes, he's awesome. Watch him all the time. He does really, really cool CAD models and puzzles, and it's really, really interesting. Um, if you were going to buy a 3D printer that did multiple colors, what would you choose? Prusa i3, well, original Prusa i3, Mark III with MMU. It's amazing. Or you should check out the Mosaic Palette. That's that's the thing that, um, before that had the, it, it snips multiple filaments and fuses them together into one long strand, which is, which is really cool. Ultimate printer, look up Thomas Workshop for 40, 40, 40 centimeter. Just found me on Instagram, <laughs> thanks. All right, so step two is done. Screen, power supply on. All right, step three. Time for the Z end stop, which is somewhere hiding. Where does the end stop go? Here it is. It's big, four hot ends. Yeah. Well, the um, this actually 
if you search um, E3D, I think it's called, I'm not sure what it's called. It's like Titan or, oh, that's it. It's called Kraken, I think, called the Kraken. It's a huge print head with four nozzles. So it's water cooled. It's really, really crazy. Liquid cooled hot ends. Yeah, four colors is a lot. It's plenty. Two colors is even... Two, two colors is pretty cool. Three colors or four colors, now that's, that's crazy. All right, this is the Z end stop limit switch. That's going to go on the left side of the printer. We need this, I believe, yeah. So step three on the left side, come on, there we go, okay. So we're going to stick this, I believe right there, let me see, on this side right here, and then twist in the locking screws, awesome. Make sure these are facing up. So, so when they go into the V-slot aluminum, you, you, you turn the screw and it locks in just like that. the Z and stop in. All right, next step is, cool. Z motor, also pancake motor. Well, not full pancake, but smaller stepper motor. So that goes on the back over here. I believe it goes right in there. Cool. Uh, so what kind of screws we need? Two 14, sorry, M4 by 18 P screws. Four by, the 16? 18. Four by 18, four by 18. Here we go. It says 4x18, but I only have 4x16 here. 4x14. 4x16. Oh, yeah, there we go. 4x18. Cool. These are actually pretty good instructions for a Chinese printer. Not bad. The pictures look, look really good. Show you what, what, what parts you need in each step. They're clear. Pretty simple, easy, easy, easy to do. Again, this is sort of aimed for beginners, so not bad. The uh, instructions are pretty good for beginners, I would say. Which is good because they need to put this together. A reason why it's so cheap is because it's not fully put together. You need to put some things together. It saves them some labor at the factory. There we go. All right. Now we just have to screw in the stepper motor. Cool. Right here. Put the screws inside there. Pretty easy. Second screw. 
that one should go in as well. Cool. Yeah, this is pretty easy. It's not bad for beginners. Z steppers on. Nice and solid. Cool. Next step. You're on the next page. Almost there. Step five. You will definitely be getting this, being this thing uh, printed. Printing. Hopefully we can do a test print and I'll show you guys how this flexible bed works out. It's so cool. It's super easy to take off prints instead of, instead of scraping at it with this spatula. And it's so much easier to just pop off the bed, twist a little bit, and the parts fly off. It, it's really cool that Creality put this in, a beginner printer. This is, this is starting, to, starting to look like a really good package for beginners especially. especially. So now we're working on the X carriage. It goes right here. We turn it right here. That moves up and down with the print head on it. All right. So we need this big part. And then we need B1. Are these labeled? B1. They're not labeled. Okay. Well. Looks like it has three holes, three holes, yeah, this one. And then we are going to stick this on here, I believe. Yep. Let's screw this part into here. But we need some screws first. M16, um, I believe. 4x16 with a washer. 4x16, awesome. Any more questions you guys have? I'll make sure to answer them. I still wonder what this huge tube is. It's like shrimp, shrink wrap. I don't know. <laughs> All right. So, if you guys have any ideas for any other future videos, like any other beginner videos or things th things like that, just let me know. I'll try to make one real quick. Yeah, about watching you build this. <laughs> Yeah, most of my popular videos are beginner videos, so I want to continue, continue to make those because a lot of people seem to watch them and like them and learn from them, which is what I want to do, help people learn about 3D printing. So, looks like one, two, three, okay. Me too, I'm total intrigued. <laughs> yeah, this is pretty interesting for beginners. So we're going to, where does this go? Goes like this. And then we're going to stick this part on here. A little confusing. Oh, right there. How old are you? I am 18, believe it or not. How am I supposed to stick these holes in there? These screws. This is weird. One goes in there. So many options. <laughs> All right. That's pretty weird. Stick this, the Allen key through this hole into the screw. Now we're going to Screw it into a piece of V-slot, hopefully. Just seeing your pixel Instagram, very nice. Thank you. I try to post a lot of pictures of 
my work, what I'm trying to do, some videos I'm making, prints that I'm printing. Come on. Just need Okay, this is pretty hard. This is hard to orient correctly. Hard to see inside here to put the screw on. There we go. Finally. Cool. One screw on, one more to go. Actually, let me see. Yep. This is kind of hard. This is a hard step. Stick this screw through there. Put the Allen key through. All right. Oops. Don't fall. Don't fall. Cool. Oops. Come on. There we go. Awesome. Get in the hole. Come on. There we go. Cool. That was a hard step. Now I'm just going to. Yep, that's right. Okay. Put this on. Try not to scratch this powder coat. Looks really nice. Oh, what the heck? I'll dim you later. Wouldn't let me let me hear. There's a cool 3D clock on here. Just want to build a launch mean 3D printing. <laughs> Wouldn't let me hear. Oh, cool. 3D clock. Cool. Yeah, 3D printing is awesome. You can just find anything, any physical object you want online or cut it yourself, click print, and then a few hours later, you have your own 3D object. It's pretty cool. Why is that? Oh. Did I put this on backwards? Yes, I did. Oh my gosh. There's a slot in here. See how this is, this, there's a screw right here. It's bending the whole part up. You can kind of see it a little bit. There is room for that little screw to fit in on this side. I just need to take it off, flip it over, put it back on. Should have said that in the instructions. But yeah. There we go. One out. So would I be right on believing if I have a laptop, a 3D printer, and filament, I am good to go. We can start practice making prints. Yep. Exactly. Just get a printer, some filament, a laptop. You can grab parts off of thingiverse.com. It's a huge library of parts. And then you download them to your computer, slice them on probably Cura, stick some filament in your printer, and then start printing. It's pretty easy. And there are tons of videos online on, on how to do everything. For, every, for any printer you buy, there will be tons of tutorials online and on YouTube uh, on, 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 on 
had how to use it and little errors and problems that you that you, you, you may have others have had too so and there's a huge community out there in 3d printing so if you have any problems you can join a, like a Facebook page or a Thingiverse group post a question there and people will definitely be willing to help and answer your questions Alright, almost finished with this step. Put one more screw right in there. Cool. This is a weird part to hold. Alright, yep. By flipping this part around, it fixed the problem. Everything is nice and flush. Cool. All right, lost it for a minute back. <laughs> cool, glad you are back. We are. We just finished up putting putting the X carriage assembly together on this rod. So right here, we have the X axis motor. If you look in there, you can see that black tooth gear right there is going to have a belt on it that runs through the channel and then attached to the to the head to pull back and forth and this is the extruder motor so the filament goes in here you clamp it down it get it gets pushed pushed out through this uh, stepper motor gear out through here which is going to be attached to the tubing goes all the way in to the extruder and gets pushed out. All right, so that is together. So much stuff on my desk. All right, so next step looks like you're putting on the print head, cool. And then this part, it's called K2. This is the other side of the x carriage assembly, which will ride on the other side of the frame on, on the under three so next step is put the head on the back so flip this around again here is the print head and it says hold it like this and then we're going to stick the whoops head on this way. See there are three rollers here and they slide onto the track just like that. Super smooth. That's actually really nice. There's zero wobble at all. That's really good actually. Zero wobble. Alright, so once we put the print head on, we're gonna put we're gonna stick the other side of the X carriage. Hey, I'm back. Oh, flaming. <laughs> Welcome back. So we put the power supply on, screen on, got the two side rails on, and we're just finishing up the X carriage assembly. All right, so what screws, screws do we need? F uh, two, four by 16, which should be right here, four sixteen. Oop, got a DM on, on Instagram. Yes, yeah, sorry, the name of this account is stupid. <laughs> no, it's fine. I have accounts like that, too. It's funny. Um, two screws and some lock washers to make sure everything compresses nicely. Got a DM on Instagram. Okay, so we're going to put the washers on the screws, put in the other side of X, X carriage, then slide it over here. Almost done, now we'll start printing. See how this prints. 
All right, so looks like it goes on this way, I believe. Yeah, just like this. This one is like from 2010. <laughs> oh, there we go. That one here, this here, screw it in. Nope, wrong. There we go. It's a little awkward to screw in. There we go. Ah. Okay, second screw. Awesome. NT. Whoops. <laughs> So we might have to calibrate this a little bit to get to print perfectly, but so far, everything looks pretty good. It's lining up, the holes are lining up correctly. We might have to calibrate the bed when we put it all together, make sure the Z end stop is the correct height. And we'll print something out. Awesome. Cool. Uh, there we go. Ah. Cool. So there is the finished X axis assembly. I'm going to give the stream a quick shout out on my Insta track. Oh, cool. Thank you, Flaming. I should probably do that on mine too. <laughs> so here we go. X carriage assembly complete. Uh, next step is we're going to have to put the, the belt right here the x carriage belt attach that right here so this motor on the end can pull the head back and forth take that out of the bag uh, so many emails all right so empty bag So these have little end stops or little end clips built in. Come on. All right, this, this is gonna be the hard part, I think. So, attach like that. So I believe we go up through the bottom. Here, come on. Up to the bottom here. There we go. Come out this side. Then we turn around and then stick it back around this side. Come on. <laughs> so close. There we go. Awesome. Stuck in the slot. Come on. There we go. Let me just use flush cutters to try to get this out. Come on. There we go. Cool. Now we can pull this, I think, through. Yep. So this, this should be sized perfectly to fit under here. Oh no. There we go. Cool. And then we're going to pull it all the way down to the end, just like that. What was that? Flaming Prince mentioned you. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so now you guys can see we're going to continue the loop. So we're going to attach it to the bottom of the head right here. I believe, yes we are, 
stick it right in there. And then this one, this end has to line up with the teeth on the stepper motor and then stick it in there. Awesome. Sure, no. <laughs> so now you can see that the belt's super loose. So you have to, so you have to tension that somewhere. So we're going to tension that with the tensioner, I believe. Yes, we are. So in the bag, we have this little thing right here, which has some bearings on the ends. And we can screw this into this side of X carriage. So let me figure out which way. That one, that one. Yep. So we're going to stick it on right here. Come on. It's already tight. There we go. Cool. Okay, thanks. Just wanted to make sure. Sure, no problem. Oh, do you have any? You have to pay customs to get this ship from Florida to gear best. Uh, yeah, there is no shipping cost. <laughs> yeah, you get. There's actually free shipping with gear best. I got this from gear best with free shipping to the United States. I live in Philly area, and that took about two weeks. So, not too bad. Yep, yeah. Gearbest is a Chinese company. But they ship everywhere. Is that holding in? No. There we go. Cool. All right, almost done with the tensioner is in. Now I'm just going to loosen up a tiny bit so I can pull it out and then loosen up. Not, not, not loosen, tighten up the tensioner. Just put everything's nice and tight. Cool, there we go. Awesome, now you can see that the there is the belt runs from the motor all the way around through the tensioner over here, under to the head. So this motor will move the head back and forth. Cool. Weird, wonderful. You mentioned the mosaic for multicolor. Now is the printer. Now is that a printer or just say a add-on? And if it is an add-on, would it work with a product you're, you're done for now? Yes. So it's an add-on. It's a big box. It's, it's a machine. Um. Yeah. Yeah. So it works. It works. It works with like any one one extruder printer. Um, so for this, for example, has one extruder, so you can use it. Um, I can actually show you really quick. This is what a mosaic looks like. You can search it right now. It's called Palette Mosaic. Uh, here we go. So this is what it looks like. Nope, don't want an email. Uh, palette. So yeah, here's what it looks like. You feed this four motors here, they pull and pour four filaments 
that splices it together into one long extruder. Okay, so here here's some examples of four color prints from the palette. Here are compatible printers with which is which is pretty much any FDM printer right now. Yep. So looks very big. I like it. All right. Let's get back to putting this together. All right. Next up. Cool. Thanks, guys. Yep, sure. So, I'm guessing now we are going to put on X carriage, and we're pretty much done. Just after this, we have to just wire it, which don't take very long. Step nine, put it over the front. Yep. Alrighty, so we're going to slide the whole carriage over the frame. And then, oh, whoops. I forgot, wait, what step was that in? I need to the, needed to put the lead screw in. <laughs> my fault. What is it right now? Yep. Forgot the lead screw. That is pretty important. So, this is the lead screw. We're going to stick that around back here. Then we have to untighten the set screws over here to put in the lead screw. Give me one second. So the lead screw in the back here mates up with the lead nut, which is right here on the X carriage, which, which allows it to move up and down. One, one month, 10 days till make a fair little still on what I push it. Yeah, September. That's gonna be a lot of fun though. I can't wait. Maker Fair Worlds is in New York City. I'll be going to that. It'll be a lot of fun. Ah! <laughs> There's gonna be a ton of. Wrong size. Gonna be a ton of 3D printer, 3D print companies there, filming companies, YouTubers, makers. It's gonna be really cool. Yeah, it's gonna be awesome. Yeah, definitely. Hopefully, we'll hand out some maker coins. Here's mine. You can get this on my Thingiverse page too. Pretty cool. I. Sounds, it sounds like VidCon. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Viper Makers. I bought one of these. It's my first 3D printer. I think it took a machine. Haven't used it much yet. Thank you. Yeah. Um, we'll see. So, so far, it looks pretty, pretty good for a beginner printer. It's only 180 bucks, which is not bad at all. And it's made by Creality, so it has to be pretty decent. Um, I'll set up a print in a, in a second. This is one of the last steps. All right, so. Huh. This set screws a little bit off, so. I've never been to one of those events. Sounds like fun. Yeah, this is actually my first Maker Faire, so. I'm really excited. It's going to be huge. It's a world maker affair, so everyone's going to be there. Literally everybody. So hopefully I'll get to meet a lot of people. My first two. Yeah. It's going to be crazy. 
is going to be pretty crazy. Alright, I'm just going to unscrew these so I can fix this motor. It's tilted a little bit so the set screw is not straight. There we go. If the set screw is not straight, it's going to wobble and then break the printer. So that is not good. All right, there we go. Set screw is straight. I'm not 100% sure what to expect. Definitely going to have several maker coins on hand with me for people. Yeah, definitely. Same here. Definitely. I've seen lots of videos about Maker Fair last year, but I'm actually going to be there this time. It's going to be really fun. All right, time to slide the X carriage on. Have to line up all of these bearings. Oop, there we go. All right. Now, what are make coins? He will show you one in a second. Yeah. Uh, so it's like a free printed coin. Like mine has my logo on it that you can just hand out to people. It's just a fun little tra trading item for the 3D printing community. It's pretty cool. What does that say? Don't, oh, yes. Okay, thanks, Th yeah. A lot of people have them. It's just a fun little thing to hand out to people. Most, most, most people CAD them themselves, print them out in different filaments, different colors, different styles, designs. It's a fun trading item. Here we go. So I'm manually moving the set screw down so the whole thing will lower. Oops. Make sure this is on. There we go. Cool. Well, look at that. Seems like much more assembly than the CR10. Yeah, the CR10 is just two things. Put the the whole top assembly onto the bottom of the bed, plug it all together, and you're good. But this is, this is almost done. It's not bad. I have to level this a little bit, but I'm going to tighten up the set screw. Sorry, the set nut. Actually, that's a bad idea. <laughs> we want the set nut a little bit loose so the printer can, the tiny variances in the stepper, in the lead screw, will mess up everything. So, there we go. What are the dimensions of the building? I think it's. 220 by 220 by 250 says right here 720 watt PLA 1.75 2018 uh, the net weight 7.8 kilograms it's FDM enter three cool all right there we go almost done step 10 put the top piece on Right there, looking good. On still a good price. Yeah, it's an amazing price. Hundred and eighty dollars is not bad at all. Bigger, bigger than the A8. Uh, yeah, I believe so. Uh, yes, it is a bigger than the A8. Not by much. I think that the A8 is hundred eighty by hundred eighty millimeters. I believe. I may, I may be totally wrong, but this is two twenty by two twenty. All right, let's screw this in. 
M five by twenty five. Here we go. Roughly the same. Yeah, it is. Yeah. This is a little bit bigger though. A little bit, but roughly. Alright, gonna screw on the top piece. Yep. Wait a second. Yep, did it again. See there holes in here for the top of the screw to set into. like just have to put the filament spool holder on top and then plug a few wires and then we're all good to go screw this in screw this up all right cool now that is rock solid except for it wobbles <laughs> that's not good and look at the bottom Yeah, it's weird. Huh. Not level. I'll look at it later. It's weird. But there we go. Look at that. Adjustable feet. Um, These don't, but you can see that wobbles a little bit. I'll have to look at it probably some some screw that's not incorrectly but I don't know I'll look at later finish this really quick um, just have to throw in these end caps I'll be announcing my maker fair attendance on my next post I wonder how many people want to plan to go yeah I think I posted about that on my Instagram like a month ago and got I got like four people out of like 40 so <laughs> Not everyone's from the, the U.S. and not from the New York area, so we're pretty lucky people that we can just drive there. Still somehow. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Caps are in, so you won't cut yourself on that. Um, cool. Let's see. One more thing, just filament spool. I see. I see they make a four-color filament 3D printer that can print any color, like an inkjet printer does. That could be a dope printer to get into the future. Yeah. So, the cool thing about the original Prusa i3. Is that you can you, you just buy the, the the printer itself, but then upgrade later with the M MMU, which you just mount on, on on the top of their printer, and then you can print four colors. It, it, it's an upgrade, so you, so you upgrade your printer to the four color in, in the future. You, you don't have to buy it that direct that that that, that exact time that, that you purchase the printer itself. It's cool. I'm in no I'm in Ohio, so I cannot make it. Sorry, hopefully next year. Yeah, that's pretty far away. That stinks. But let's see, we need this, two of those, two M5. I guess this, nope, that's not it. Five by eight, five by eight. Two of these. I like how they give you one or two extra screws of each. That's pretty cool. 
Just in case, just in case something happens. All right, two of those, and then two of these. Oh, that's gonna fit. M5 T nuts. I have no choice. I'm in the UK. <laughs> yeah, that's a little bit hard. <laughs> um, I still haven't heard from the Prusa about visiting, but at least a showroom. So if not, still the response. There's Nick. Yeah, that'd be really cool if you can go visit. It'd be really cool. Are you are you in the Czech or Czech 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 Re Re Republic or? Push everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, just gotta screw these in. That goes through there. And this goes in here. Oh, Czech Republic, awesome. Yeah, that's exactly where his factory is. That's so cool. I bet it's huge. I watched that 3D Maker Noob video, the factory tour, super cool. And with a, And uh, with PrinterBot closing down, a U.S. company, 3D printing company, that stinks. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. That's weird. The last screw. It's not going in correctly. both wanted to go so now that pushed me to yeah that's the one lifetime experience it's so cool it's like one of the biggest if not the biggest 3d printing company jack are you into electronics also yeah a little bit this on how's it go front okay cool same here awesome <laughs> Through Prusa, though Prusa is going to be at Maker Fair, so we can start. Yeah, that would be awesome. I speak Czech, so that would be cool to talk. To. Oh, really? That's so cool. I did not know that. Speak Czech. Come on. Oh my gosh. This screw is stuck. It's the, literally the last one. There we go. Yeah, I was born here, then moved to the US. Not quite young. Most of my family is here to visit. So I, oh, that's actually, that's so cool. So, you have to talk to Joseph Prusa. That is so cool. All right, hopefully this will work. From my main goals here, yeah. 
You're not far from me, Jack. Would I make some day maybe do a project or two? I love electronics. Yeah. Sounds like fun. Ohio. Maybe a few hour drive, but. <laughs> I love to drive that property. <laughs> All right, filament spool is on. Ah, cool. Just got to put the spool holder on. I can drive soon and happy little. <laughs> All right. This goes in the back. It is fun. <laughs> go awesome spool holders on last step you just have to wire up everything shouldn't be that hard there is a little diagram there which is pretty pretty useful so we'll turn it around this is a nice printer you just pick it up with this hand, with this top bar super easily. Nothing moves. It's pretty cool. All right, so time for some wiring. First things is power. That's easy. Male to female, just like that. That one's easy. The cool thing about Creality printers is that they all have these have these little yellow tags on them, which shows exactly which port to go in. Creality has always been good with the diagrams and directions. Yeah, that is true. So, uh, Z Z stepper is on this side. A little better than A net. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, stick this here. That one goes right in there. Come on. There we go. Yeah, and you have to, to fend for yourself. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I found that out by just researching. Yeah, that's true. A bunch of Chinese Prusa clones. The, the directions are horrible. Some come with, come with no directions at all, or you have to just like Google it or find some video on YouTube. All right. X for X. Let's see. Or actually Z. Z stepper, all these, all these wires are perfectly sized. There we go, perfect. And then we have this big wire for everything up here. This is this should be the yep x x axis. Uh, limit switch, which should be inside here. Have to stick that inside. I would really love a Prusa one day. I just don't have that kind of budget for it. Yeah, exactly. Same here. All right. 
x-axis stepper. And then extruder stepper right there. And we're done. That is it, I believe. Yeah, perfect. Awesome. All right, let's plug it in. I know, this is number six, so <laughs> they're all on the floor right now. <laughs> um, put this back. So, Ender 3, fully assembled. Oh, forgot, one more thing. Gotta plug in the screen. Let's plug it on here. Let's see what port to plug that in. Goes into, what was that? Doesn't say. Got rid of one ripple. <laughs> Well, two, but one lost most of its functionality. Yeah, I have a bunch, bunch of printers like that. I thought I read some. Oh, there we go. E3. Got it. E3. All these wires are perfectly sized. Terminator printer hello you can add really lights on top for print flame prints or for filming prints yeah Just thinking about adding some LEDs up here that would be cool all right um also we need to plug in the Bowden tube just like that there we go Little clip in the back to hold all the wires. Stick that in there. Cool. Looking good. They've, they they clamp the wiring a lot. The CR10 has some or just dis disorganized wires. Yeah, that's true. Well, in the back here, it's a little bit disorganized, but. Much better than CR10. So let's plug her in and see what happens. Okay, does CR10 have a good power supply? Yeah. All this, surprisingly, all the CR10 wiring and everything is on point. It's really, really good. Everything has proper connectors, and it's all wired correctly with ground and everything. Hopefully, hopefully there's a test print on the SD card. Well, I might have to go to eat dinner now, and then I can probably come back later. If all of you, all of you want to come back later, we can print some, print something out and talk a little more. But it's dinner time, so. I'll be back, just let us know. <laughs> cool. I'll, let, I'll, I'll, I'll give you time in a minute. I'll just plug this in first. So, with the US adapter to European plug, let's see what happens. All right. Maybe asleep. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for what you've done now. Good much. Oh, awesome. Thank you. All right, so let's just flip the switch, see if it explodes. Hopefully not. 
There we go. Awesome. Look at that. Fan spinning up. Screen. Creality3D.com. Ender 3. Awesome. All right. Well, let's let's home it. I guess. See what happens. Or actually, let's let's move the axes first. Control. Oh, these are, these are new settings from my CR10. Good job, good job, though. Thank you for your time. Oh, thank you. Thank you for joining. This, this was fun. Hopefully, I'll do more live streams in the future. That's auto home. See what happens. Good so far. Thank you guys. Yeah, this was this was really fun. All right, so I'll level this. We'll, we'll take a quick break, and then we'll come back. Um, let me see, what time is it now? Five, how about we come back at, what about eight, how's that sound? Come back at eight Eastern time. But let's uh, finish this up really quick first. Let's, let's level this bed, as you can see, it's not even close to being leveled. The nozzle is like a full 10 mils from the bill plate. So, so the, also another cool thing, cool, thanks Tom. So another cool thing is that with the Ender 3, oops, hold on, they have these humongous calibration wheels on the bottom so it's super easy to, easy to spin and calibrate the corners so you just spin these wheels <laughs> yeah you can, you can you can go to bed <laughs> and then it's going to lower the bed go just slide the head over make sure you're above <clears throat> yeah the small ones are really hard So now we're going to get a piece of paper. I'll just use this receipt right here, and then we'll just level the four corners. And then we'll, then we'll take a quick break, and then come back and print something. We can talk some more. So let me auto home this one more time. Prepare. Auto home. Oh shoot, oh shoot, oh shoot. Oh, that's a close one. That clip almost got in the way. All right, now I'm gonna disable steppers. Get the taper. Like the CR CR10 if possible. Leaving disciples preventing. Yeah. Yeah, I can show you the CR10 in a second. Let me just calibrate this first. Move this over. All right. That's pretty good for that side. There we 
we go. Time for the back ones. And one more. Awesome. So thank you all so much for watching. Hope you guys liked it. Hope you learned something. Uh, assembled the Creality Ender 3. Took about two hours exactly, pretty much. Um, so come back at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, and we'll print something out, and we'll keep talking. So thank you guys so much. Uh, yeah, see you guys at 8.